Hi, this uh, right here on the bench is a creative Sun Luster RDG2 ZS front panel unit. Originally, this panel worked with a PCI Sun Luster card. Sadly, when I got it, only the panel was there. I wanted to use it anyway, so I had to find out how it works. Within 3 to 4 evenings, I've managed to completely reverse engineer the entire digital backend of this board. And as it turns out, all the inputs and outputs are accessible on the pin header in the back. They run either over SPD for I2S and can be driven easily. This means that you can easily use it as a general purpose audio interface. You only need to provide power and you can use the signals. In this video, I will add a USB 2 SPDIF audio card to it to hook it up with my PC, essentially making a high quality USB headphone DAC. I'll talk about each interface and show you some oscilloscope signals in detail in a second video. For now, let's just focus on the hardware mod. So I've already taken apart this unit a bit and then put it sort of uh, in a bag to keep it uh, intact because uh, well, this, this sort of project has been going on for at least six months now. Most of the time it was just sitting aside because I didn't have time for it. So, uh, yeah, these bags are various parts from it, screws and uh, potentiometer caps and whatnot. And inside it, uh, it's got this metal enclosure, which is a uh, standard 5.25 inch bay enclosure. Uh, and when you take out the PCB, uh, here it is. So. You've got the connectors on the front here. Uh, you can see there's a sort of mezzanine board with uh, Toslink and other RCA connectors. And on the back, we've got uh, minimal X power and a mysterious pin header that usually goes to the uh, to the sound card. So as you could already tell from the front panel, it's got SPDIF in and out. It's got Toslink in and out. It's got uh, headphones out with a uh, volume potentiometer. It's got auxiliary in, left and right, over RCA jacks, and it's got a standard uh, big headphone jack line in or mic in input. Apart from that, it's got MIDI I.O. and a Firewire port, and this small window for an infrared uh, receiver. But what we're going to be interested in here is uh, SPDIF I.O., Toslink I.O. and headphones. So as I've said, I spent a bit of time trying to reverse engineer this thing and I've got the digital part pretty much covered, except for infrared and uh, firewire, but I'm not going to use that anyway. There are several things you can use uh, this board for. Uh, first of all, you can use it as a SPDIF to optical converter. Mm, because the both the speed of input and output and the optical input input and output are broken out eventually on this pin header here, so you can either fit it a, an optical signal and take the speed of output from this pin header on the or the other way around, feed a speed of output to a pin over here and uh, get the same signal on the optical output here. Another thing. You, which you can do, which is what I'm going to do here, or how I have this set up currently, because this is a temporary connection. I've got a USB sound card here, which is used only like a USB to speed of converter. And there used to be a, a jack here. I just, I just removed it because I'm running it over the jumper wires. And I've connected it to the pair of pins that uh, are responsible for speed if signal that ends up on the headphone jack here. So we're gonna take a look at that in a moment. Um, but what this is now is sort of a uh, USB headphone DAC, which is pretty damn good, I must say. So SPDIF comes in on the uh, on the fifth pin from the left. Uh, the, uh, the signal is on this side and uh, the other side is ex almost exclusively ground. All right, so we've got quite a mess of wires here, but anyway. Uh, so this is the input jack we've just modified. Uh, this is the sound card that 
does USB to SPDIF conversion and then we've got SPDIF running over this cable into these two jumper wires and then they are going directly to the SPDIF headphones input and they are out here on the headphone jack and if I actually play something uh, then you can hear uh, there is actually some music going out of it, so I would say uh, this is a successful modification. Uh, I just needs to uh, I just need to put this all together in back into the case and then maybe get rid of this cable, so that's just uh, desolder this RCA jack and run the wires direct directly to here. Uh, I'll see about this. So, here's the finished thing. Uh, I've installed the USB sound card on a small piece of scrap PCB and use two screws to hold it in place and just use these two jumper wires I've removed the uh, RCA jack and connected them straight through and it works pretty okay uh, I'm very happy with how it turned out so it just needs 12 volt power and USB and this is basically a uh, pretty awesome uh, USB DAC now so that's all uh, when it comes to this uh, interface um, if you have something similar, because I know Creative used uh, to do, uh, used to make these uh, sort of interfaces for a while for a variety of different sound cards, uh, then uh, yeah, leave a comment and uh, share it. So uh, I'm interested in uh, what other and um, what other interfaces were made and what are the difference differences between them. As I said, I'm gonna put some more stuff. Uh, on on my blog so that's gonna be linked in the description so that's all for today's video if you've enjoyed it leave a like uh, leave a comment and see you in the next one cheers <laughs>